Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 28. In this video we're going to learn how to find the greatest common divisor, which I've abbreviated as GCD. So the lesson objective for today is just to learn how to find the greatest common divisor, again abbreviated GCD, for a group of numbers. So before we kind of get into the lesson, I want to clear something up that causes a lot of confusion for students. As someone who makes a lot of video tutorials, one thing I've noticed is that if I post a video on, let's say, finding the greatest common divisor, like we have here. Students will watch that and they will post in the comments, hey, do you have anything on finding the greatest common factor? And my reply will always be, yeah, you just watched it. If someone's asking you to find the greatest common divisor for, let's say, two numbers, it's the same thing as if they asked you to find the greatest common factor for those two numbers. So if I said something like, what is the greatest common divisor of let's say 12 and 30. It's the same thing as if I asked you, what is the greatest common factor of 12 and 30? Same exact thing. And to kind of think about this for a second, we all know that if we have four times three equals 12, that four and three are called factors. They're called factors of 12. But really, they're also divisors, right? So if I have 12 and I divide by 4, I get 3. There's no remainder there. If I have 12 and I divide by 3, I get 4. There's no remainder there. If a number is a factor of another, it's also a divisor, meaning if I take 12 and I divide it by any of its factors, I'll get a result that doesn't have a remainder. So when we ask for the greatest common divisor and we ask for the greatest common factor, we're asking for the same thing. So when working with two or more numbers, the greatest common divisor, again, I abbreviate this GCD, is the largest whole number that is a divisor of all numbers. And I could have just as easily said, when working with two or more numbers, the GCF, the greatest common factor, is the largest whole number that is a factor of all numbers. Again, we can interchange those. Now actually finding the greatest common divisor or the greatest common factor for a group of numbers is very simple. Go ahead and write down the steps and then use them as we practice. And then again, as you do more practice, you won't need to look at the paper. You will have committed the steps to your memory. So for finding the greatest common divisor, the first thing you want to do is find the prime factorization of each number. We all know how to do that at this point. We learned it a few lessons back. You can use a factor tree or some other method that you've learned if that's more comfortable for you. The next thing we're going to do is create a list of prime factors that are common to all numbers. And this part's important. When you're creating that list, make sure that the prime factors are common to all numbers. If you're trying to find the greatest common divisor for, let's say, five numbers, and you have a prime factor that's common to four of them, but not common to the fifth number, you can't use it. It has to be common to all numbers. Then the last thing, you're just going to take that list that you made and you're going to form the product of the numbers on the list. That's going to give you your greatest common divisor, right? So the greatest common divisor is the product of the numbers on the list. Very, very easy. So we're going to jump in and look at some practice problems. We want to find the greatest common divisor for each group of numbers. We're going to start out with this GCD of 12 and 20. So what is the greatest common divisor? Or I could have just as easily said, what is the greatest common factor? of 12 and 20. The first thing we're going to do is find the prime factorization of each number. I'm going to do that using a factor tree. But again, if you have another method you're more comfortable with, use that. So for 12, I'm going to start out with 4 times 3. Again, you can just start out with any two factors for 12. It doesn't matter what it is. And then anytime I have a prime factor, I just circle it and I stop. So 3 is prime, I circle and I stop. 4 is 2 times 2. 2 is prime, so I'm going to circle both. And then now let's do 20. I'm going to start out with 5 times 4. Again, any two factors for 20 would work. 5 is prime. Circle that and stop. 4 is 2 times 2. 2 is prime, so circle both. Now that we have the prime factorization for each number, and let's just write it out. We have 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. We're looking to see what is common 
to both. And I know a lot of people will make a table, and we'll do that kind of when we get to some bigger numbers. For right now, we can kind of eyeball it and see that we have one two that's in common, and then a second two that's in common, and nothing else that's in common. So if we were to form a list, that list would contain two twos, right, two twos. So for my greatest common divisor, remember I just formed the product of the numbers on the list. So the greatest common divisor is gonna be two times two, which is gonna be equal to four, right? And I could have just as easily written, greatest common factor of 12 and 20 is two times two, which is four. Again, these are the exact same thing. I wanna embed that in your head so that you understand it. All right, let's take a look at the greatest common divisor of 36 and 54. So again, start out by finding the prime factorization for each number. For 36, it's six times six we could do. So six is not prime, so we're gonna continue. Six is two times three, and two times three over here. And two and three are both prime, so we're gonna circle all of these, and we're done. Now for 54, I could think about nine times six, and neither number is prime, so we're gonna continue. Nine is three times three, six is three times two, and all of those are prime. So we're gonna circle all of these. And we have our prime factorizations, so 36 is two times two times three times three. Two times two times three times three. 54 is three times three times three times two. So I'm gonna write this as two times, I'm just gonna put a space here because I don't have another two. And then I'm gonna put times three times three times three. And I'm basically just doing that so that we can glance at this and see what's common, right? So I can look right now and see that I have a two that's common to both, I have a three that's common to both, and another three that's common to both. So if I was to make a little list, it would contain one two, one three, and then a second three. So the greatest common divisor of 36 and 54 is gonna be equal to two times three times three. So two times three is six, six times three is 18. So your greatest common divisor for 36 and 54 is gonna be 18. All right, let's take a look at one with three numbers involved. So not any more difficult, just a little bit more tedious. The more numbers you put in there, the more tedious it gets. So we have the greatest common divisor of 25, 80, and 90. So we're gonna find the prime factorization for each number. 25 is five times five, and five is prime, so we're gonna circle both. 80, I'm gonna start out with eight times 10. Eight is four times two. Four is two times two. Now two is prime, so I'm gonna circle all of these guys. And then 10 is five times two. Five and two are prime, so I'm gonna circle those guys. And then what about 90? Well, I'm gonna do 90 as nine times 10. Neither's prime, so I continue. Nine is three times three. 10 is five times two. And all of these are prime, so I'm gonna circle them. So now I have my prime factorizations. So 25 is five times five. So I'm just gonna write this like this. Five times five, 80 is two times two times two times two, then times five. And then 90, I got two times three times three times five. So one thing we can do is we can write the numbers that are common on top of each other so it makes it completely clear. And I kind of did that in the last example, but as you get better at this, you really don't need to do it. Particularly when you look at 25, you see that it's five times five. So right away, you know that when you go to the other numbers, you're only looking for a five, right? Because that's all that's involved in here, and it has to be common to everything. So I'm not looking at any of these twos, and I'm not looking at any of these twos or threes here. So really, I would just highlight this five, this five, and this five. I just have one five that's common to everything. Now there's a second factor of five in the prime factorization of 25, but it's not matched in the prime factorization of 80 or 90, right? There's just one five in the prime factorization for 80 and 90. 
So we can only put one five on our list. So it makes it really easy. The greatest common divisor of 25, 80, and 90 is going to be five. Right? I don't need to multiply anything here. There's only one number that's in common to everything. And again, that's five. All right, for the last problem, let's look at one that's a little challenging. So we have the greatest common divisor of 198, 165, and 132. So let's start out by just factoring 198. So I know it's an even number. So I know it's at minimum divisible by two. Now it's not gonna be divisible by four because if I look at the final two digits here, 98, that's not divisible by four. So let's go ahead and just start out with dividing this guy by two and just seeing what we get. Two will go into 19 nine times. Nine times two is 18. Subtract, you get one. Bring down the eight there. Two goes into 18 nine times. Nine times two is 18. Subtract, you get zero. So 99 times two gives you 198. So two is a prime number, so we can circle this and stop. 99 is not. Right away when I look at 99, I'm thinking, is it divisible by nine? Nine plus nine is 18, so yeah, it's divisible by nine. So this is nine times and you might know by now this is 9 times 11. But again, in case you didn't, you could just do a long division, 99 divided by 9. Now, we should know at this point that 11 is a prime number, so we'll circle that and stop. And 9 is 3 times 3. So 3 is prime. We're going to circle these. We have our prime factorization for 198. It's 2 times 3 times 3 times 11. Let's write this on the next page. So 198 is two times three times three times 11. Okay, let's do 165 now. So just like with 198, I don't know two factors for this number off the top of my head, but again, using my divisibility rules, I see it ends in a five. So I know I can do 165 divided by five. Five goes into 16 three times. Three times five is 15. Subtract and get one. Bring down the five, five goes into 15 three times, three times five is 15, subtract and get zero. So 33 times five gives me 165. Now five is a prime number, so I can circle this and stop. 33 is not. I know that 33 is divisible by 11. 33 divided by 11 is three. So 33 would be 11 times three, and 11 and three are both prime. So circle both of those. And so for 165, we get three times five times 11. Okay, for the last one, we have 132. And I can see that this number is even right away. So I know it's divisible by two. The last two digits form the number 32. So that's divisible by four. And one plus three is four, four plus two is six. Six divided by three is two, no remainder. So it's divisible by four and three. So it has to be divisible by 12. So 132 divided by 12, 12 goes into 13 once, one times 12 is 12, subtract and get one, bring down the two, 12 goes into 12 once, one times 12 is 12, subtract and get zero. So 12 times 11, okay, 12 times 11 would give me 132. Again, we know 11 is prime, 12 we could write as four times three, three is prime, four is two times two, two is prime, so we're gonna circle both. So 132 is two times two times three times 11. Now we're gonna form a little list and look for what's common. So I have a two in the prime factorization of 198. I don't have it in 165, so it's not gonna be common in everything. Although I have two factors of two here, I can't use two in my list because again, it's not common to everything. What about three? I have that in 198, I have it in 165, and I have it in 132. So I can put one factor of three in that list. Now I have a second factor of three here, but I don't have a second factor of three in 165, so it can't go into the list. Now the last thing we look at in the prime factorization of 198 is 11, and that's going to be common to everything. So there's an 11 here and here. So really the only thing that's common to all three would be one factor of three, and one factor of 11. So when I build my GCD, my greatest common divisor for 198, 
165 and 132, it's going to be equal to, again, the product of the numbers on the list. So 3 times 11 or 33.